Hey, for this video, I'm going to demonstrate the COPD examination. Uh, so I'll start off by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Evan Graham. I'm with Internal Medicine. Is it all right if I demonstrate uh, the COPD exam on you? Perfect. Um, from there, I go and wash my hands. And then I just want to make sure that they're stable and everything doesn't need any kind of acute medical care before proceeding with the exam. Uh, to start off with vital signs, things that you can look for with COPD. Uh, so you can see tachycardia, and it's specifically an irregular heartbeat if they have any kind of multifocal atrial tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. Other things you can look for is tachypnea, hypoxia, and then you can also note uh, pulsus paradoxus. Uh, so pulsus paradoxus, um, it's, it's actually not paradoxical. Um, so it's a normal physiological response. Uh, with inspiration, you get a drop in the blood pressure um, because the negative intrathoracic pressure when you're breathing in causes an indrawing of blood into the right side of the heart, which um, expands the right side, causes a decreased filling to the left, and you get a drop in the blood pressure uh, uh, subsequently with inspiration. With COPD, um, because you've got a lot of retained air, um, obstructive airway, uh, your expiratory pressure is gonna be increased. Uh, and so what ends up happening is you get a larger drop in the pressure when you're breathing in uh, than normally. Uh, and so a positive, or normal individuals have a pulse paradoxus less than 10. Um, greater than 15 is uh, really suggestive of COPD. Uh, I will put a link at the bottom of this page uh, just how to actually perform a pulse paradoxus, but for sake of time, I'm not gonna demonstrate on this video. Um, Moving on from there, uh, just on general inspection. Uh, so classically, there's two proto, uh, protoplasms that can be described for uh, COPD. Uh, there's um, pink puffers and blue bloaters. Uh, pink puffers are thin, frail uh, um, individuals that have more emphysema, uh, whereas uh, blue bloaters are, are larger um, uh, individuals uh, that are more classically bronchitis. But, most patients don't actually fit into these uh, separate kind of divisions. There's usually a lot of overlap. After just looking, um, things that you can note just on the hands, um, you can see if there's any kind of yellowing of the nails um, and you can note a smell of kind of cigarette or smoke just from ongoing smoking. Uh, from there, uh, things that you can measure. So you can note a barrel chest uh, and to actually measure for barrel chesting, um, you wanna measure the anterior posterior to lateral uh, ratio. And so to measure the anterior posterior dimensions, you actually wanna measure at the fourth intercostal space at approximately uh, the nipple line. Um, so you measure from front to back, and then you measure the lateral distance as well at the same point, and you divide that ratio. A normal individual should be less than 0.75. In COPD, uh, you find a ratio greater than 0.9 as a positive finding. Other things to note on the general inspection. Um, so, You'll note some dorsal uh, kyphosis or um, curving of the back. Um, you can note a prominent sternum. The, the clavicle will end up being drawn up as well with a shortened neck. And then um, because of the hyperinflation, you can also note uh, increased uh, intra, um, intercostal, intercostal um, spaces there. Uh, other things um, that you can note, uh, so you can note uh, Harrison's sulcus uh, or Harrison's groove. Um, so Harrison's groove, are you able to just expose your abdomen for me? Perfect. Um, Harrison's groove, so uh, because of all uh, the hyperinflation and chronic kind of contraction uh, in, of the diaphragm, you actually end up getting a groove or a sulcus uh, at the costal margin from the, um, from the diaphragm pulling in so much. Other things that you can note is any kind of pursed lip breathing. Um, and then you can look for tripoding as well. So if you can just demonstrate tripoding for me. Tripoding is where you're leaning forward, your hands are often on the knees, um, and this is to help uh, with, with breathing out as well in, in any kind of severe respiratory distress. Moving on from there, um, we can go on to percussion. Um, so with percussion, the main thing that you wanna note is any kind of hyper resonance. So areas that you'd want to check, um, specifically in the right upper quadrant, is a good area to test for hyperresonance. And then the other area that you want to measure as well is you'll notice a decreased dull area just over the heart border, um, just because of the hyperinflation as well. So this is all dull along here. If that's hyperresonant, that's very suggestive of COPD and actually has a positive light field ratio of about 10. So a very good uh, test. 
Other things that aren't really that helpful um, but could be mentioned um, is measuring the diaphragmatic excursion. Um, so the diaphragmatic excursion, what you get the individual to do is, I'll get you to just breathe out all the way. Perfect, hold it. And you measure the doll space, then the start of the dullness. Can you breathe in for me all the way and hold it? And then you measure again and you find where the new dullness is again. You measure that space, it should be at least five centimeters. Um, if it's less than that, uh, then that's a positive uh, finding as well, but again, not that helpful for COPD. Um, moving on from there, we got uh, palpation. Uh, so first thing that you wanna measure um, is the laryngeal height. And as mentioned, you get a shortened neck um, from the hyperinflation. So you can measure from the thyroid cartilage down to the suprasternal notch. If that is less than four centimeters, uh, that is a positive finding. The other test that you can do um, uh, is Hoover's sign. And so Hoover's sign, again, if you can just expose your abdomen. Normal individuals, when you breathe in and out, your hands should go separated with COPD because your diaphragm is so flattened when it contracts, it actually pulls the bridge spaces inward. So you've got the costal margins. Can you breathe in and out for me? And you can see my hands going in and out. If it ends up getting pulled in, then that is a positive finding um, there as well. After we move on to auscultation, and again, you want to auscultate in all the regions of the lung. Um, and if you can just breathe in and out for me. Again, again I listen in all, all regions. Things you want to note is decreased air entry, especially early inspiratory crackles is noted, um, any kind of ronchi and any kind of wheeze. Uh, from there, okay. so moving on, we'll move on to special tests. Um, so the first special test that you can do uh, is this forced, forced expiratory time. Uh, the way you do this is you listen with the stethoscope over the trachea and you get them to breathe out as fast as they can. So if you're able to take a deep breath in for me and breathe all the way out, perfect. And you time how long um, it takes them to breathe out all the air. Uh, if it's less than three seconds, uh, that's rule, rules against COPD. If it's greater than nine seconds, then that's highly suggestive of COPD. The other test that you can do um, is uh, the match test. The way that works is you light a match, you hold the match 10 to 15 uh, centimeters away from the person's mouth, and you get them to try to blow it out without any pursed lips, so they need to have their mouth open. Um, I do not have a match here, so what I'll be doing, and I'll do it with a candle, um, and if I can just get you to breathe in as much as you can, and try to blow it out. Perfect, it's very good. And uh, so that is how you do the, uh, the match test. Uh, and so that concludes my COPD examination.